let us discuss about couple of snubber circuits snubber circuits are used to relieve the stress on the power semiconductor switches there are essentially two types of snubber circuits we will discuss couple of them consider a switch like that when the switch is on it is conducting the current and the switch is off it is supporting the voltage and it is a control switch now let us say there is track inductance and let us say it is having a value l and a current il flowing through the switch when it is flowing the polarity is in this fashion plus and minus and the voltage across the switch is given as vsw on turn off meaning there is a current il flowing through that now you turn off you are cutting open the switch which means il is suddenly dropping to zero so there is a large negative di by dt so the polarity will reverse and vsw will be l dil by dt plus the external voltage i'll put it as vcc but this is a very large quantity so you will see a large spike across the switch and uh, uh, it will be so large that it it can blow up the device or it will deteriorate it uh, to a large extent so this uh, is a large problem and we need to address this uh, address the turn off stress the other case is during turn on so you have a switch connected to the external circuit and uh, through the external circuit there can be uh capacitance stray capacitance is connected to the ground and when let us say there is a switch current when you turn on the switch at the time of turn on of the switch all the charge that is stored in these stray capacitance can flow into the switch and that can be a very large current because cdv by dt let's say this is on turn on all this is vc and c isw is c dvc by dt plus all the external currents which is supposed to flow normally the c dvc by dt can be really large and this turn on current can be so large that it can blow up this switch so you need to protect uh, against such uh, uh, such a uh, stress on the device so during turn off the protection circuit snubber circuit is called turn off snubber or even called a shunt snubber in many cases because we try to put a capacitance across this device to address this ldi by dt problem so it's called a shunt snubber the dual uh, is this the turn on snubber or we put a inductance in series to address the problem of a large cdvc by dt current it's called the series snubber so let us see how we design the basic uh, turn on turn off snubber and the basic turn on snubber let us now discuss the shunt snubber or the turn off snubber and see how it works let me draw this switch power semiconductor switch it's a bjt switch that i am drawing here but it could as well be a mosfet switch or any other switch and this has a problem due to the winding inductances or the track inductances or the stray inductances and there is a current flowing through that and during the time of turn off there is going to be a large di by dt spike due to these inductances so let us say there is a current il flowing through that through q and the voltage across q is vce and let me plot vce with time so during the time when during the time when here when q is on so vce is zero let's say and during the time when q goes from on state to the off state turn off because of this il flowing through the stray inductances there is going to be a large di by dt but we want to prevent that stress appearing on the device and then we would like to see that the voltage across the transistor 
rises in a controlled manner to VCC and settles down at VCC. How can we do this? So this is done by putting a shunt element, a capacitance across the device, across the switch. So we pass this current IL to free wheel. So instead of having a large LDI by DT spike, we will when you turn off Q, we will allow the current IL to free wheel through this diode into the capacitance. So the capacitance will get charged and uh, during that time when the transistor turns on again, we would like to discharge the capacitance and for that you need to have a discharge path. So I will put a resistance path here because you cannot connect directly the capacitance across this. It will be shorting and then it will be a huge current. So therefore you pass it through the resistance in a controlled way. There will be a discharge through it when Q turns on again and then it will be brought back to its original state so that it can receive again uh, the stray energy from the stray inductances. Now, now that this is this portion of the circuit this D, R and C are, is called the snubber circuit or the shunt snubber. So I will call this as C, this is D, R and the current through C as I cap and the current through the collector of the transistor as IC. Then let me also plot IC. IC would be high when the transistor was on and at the time of turn off the collector current linearly falls down to zero in this fashion. Now let us look at this wave shape and try to find out what should be the value of C. So IL this is IL is equal to IC plus I cap this from K, KCL you get that and then if I take only TF fall time period during that period IC that is current through uh, the uh, switch is of this shape it is linearly falling I am approximating it as a linear fall so it is IL 1 minus T by TF linear fall plus I cap. Now I cap, see IL is on this side. So I cap, I can take it to one side and then rearranging you can find IL is T by TF. So this is the current through the capacitance. So C DVC by DT is equal to I cap or the voltage across the capacitance because of the diode will be the same as VCE. So you can say VCE is 1 by C integral of I cap TT. 0 to TF, let us take only that time period. Then on integrating, because I cap is known, you substitute here and at TF apply VCE should be VCC at TF, boundary condition. And then C will work out to be IL TF by 2 VCC and this is the value of the capacitance that you need to use so that in TF time period you can in a controlled way give a smooth rise to the voltage across Q uh, to reach VCC. There will not be any spikes. So this is the effect of the turn off snubber or the shunt snubber. How to find the value of R? Let us see that. So the capacitor would have charged up plus minus to VCC and now when the transistor is turned on next, when the transistor is turned on next there are two currents that flow, one is IL itself, the other one is this capacitor will discharge through this R into the Q. So that is one path, this discharge path of the capacitance charge through Q and the other one is IL itself. So these two currents VCC which is the current uh, uh, which was the uh, voltage across the capacitance by R will be the turn on instantaneous current VCC by R plus at that instant plus IL. Now this should be less than ICM rating of the device of the Q is very important. So continuous max rating should be greater than this value. 
so from this condition r is one variable which is not known you can say r should be greater than vcc by icm minus il so this is one condition the other constraint is when this q is on during that time the whole of q charge on the q should get discharged so there should be a minimum time for which q should be on so that it allows enough time for q to uh, discharge its charge and be ready for the next cycle so the minimum on time t on minimum should be greater than phi times rc time constant there is a rc time constant this discharge is exponential in nature having a time constant rc phi times rc time constant means the steady state is reached so therefore this constraint leads to r as t on minimum by 5c c of course you know from this relationship from these two con constraints we get the range of r that we, ch we should select from so vcc by ic m minus il should be less than r which should be less than t on min by 5c so we get the range of r that we should choose and the power dissipated in rpr is see we know that the energy that is dissipated is half cv cc square and this is uh, the watt seconds divided by time ts the period switching period this will give you the power and therefore half cv cc square fs will give you the power dissipated in uh, in r whatever be the value of r within this range so in this way we know how to find the value of c and find the value of r and this is how you design a turn off snubber or a shunt snubber as shown here like this the dual of the turn off snubber or the shunt snubber is the turn on snubber or the series snubber it has a dual effect so let us draw the switch i'm using a transistor switch it could as well be a mosfet switch now let us say there is a stray capacitance charged capacitance coming across the switch due to the external circuits now this is charged to some vcc so when the switch is turned on you can have a very large current flowing through the switch and it could also be fatal so let us draw the time waveform and i will take the current ic through the switch now ic is when the switch was off the current is zero and now you are turning it on when you turn it on there can be a huge discharge huge current surge current because of the discharge because the on resistance of the uh, power semiconductor switch is almost zero you can have this vcc voltage divided by almost zero a very large current flowing through that and this large d i can blow the transistor so instead we require that the current through the transistor ic rises in a controlled manner and let us say this is the turn on time it rises in a controlled manner and reaches il gradually so for that you need to interpose something a series snubber circuit and that is composed of l and if you have l you need to have a free wheeling path the demagnetizing path uh, diode and resistor as shown here so let me say this l d and r and this voltage is vcc vce and this voltage is vl so i'll mark it vce vl and the voltage together will be vcc now let us see what vce would look like with time so when the switch was off off during this time vce would have been high at vcc and then gradually comes down to zero when it turns on Okay, using these waveforms and this uh, Kirchhoff's relationship, let us develop uh, the uh, equation for finding the value of 
the L in the series number. So VCC equals VL plus VCE, VCE plus VL and if I am I'm talking about the time of interest TR rise time. Now during this time you see that VC is falling in a linear fashion. I am making a linear approximation. So it is VCC into 1 minus T by TR plus VL. Now if I take VL into one side, VL can be found to be VCC into T by TR. Now I see that is the current through the current through the collector is also flowing through the inductor. So uh, L dIC by dt will be the voltage VL or IC is 1 by L integral of VL dt. Let us consider the period of interest 0 to TR. So when you do the integration you substitute this VCC T by TR here and integrate and uh, at T equal to TR you can take IC is equal to IL. So L is equal to VCC TR by 2 IL. So this will be the relationship for L. Now if you look at the time when the switch is off, the inductor current is freewheeling in this fashion. It's freewheeling in this fashion and there is a positive drop from positive in this side, a drop across R and drop across D in this fashion. So what is the voltage across the transistor VCE, VCC plus ILR plus VD. This is coming across the transistor and it should be less than VCEO rating of the transistor. So therefore this condition gives R to be less than VCEO minus VCC minus VD by IL. This is one condition. Another condition is the energy in the inductance should get removed, released by the time this turns on again. So there should be a minimum off time for this transistor. T of min should be greater than 5 times L by R time constant so that inductor releases all its energy, stored energy. This means R should be greater than 5L by T of min. So by this you get phi L by T of min is less than R which is less than VCC, VCEO minus VCC minus D by I L. This is the relationship for finding the range of R, for selecting the range of R. And what is the power dissipation in R? Half L I square amount of energy is removed every cycle uh, divided by T S or into F S. This will be power dissipated in the R or whatever be the value of R that you choose in this range. So this is the series number or the turn-on number. So every switch, whether it be a BJT or a MOSFET or an IGBT, should have a series number and a shunt number together. So the series number, shunt number and overcurrent protection along with the gate drive forms the complete power semiconductor switch.